So we're now going to go ahead and take a look at a sampling distribution. And so why we care about a sampling distribution is that uh, when we look at the distribution of a statistic, the sampling distribution of a statistic, we can see how good of an estimator the statistic is in estimating the parameter. And so you have all of this notation that you'll go through. Uh, make sure, again, don't be intimidated by this notation. We've seen it before. Um, X, uh, X bar, mu, sigma, sigma squared, p for population proportion, p hat, s, right? And so we have all this notation. The one that many times intimidates students or confuses students is this idea here, this uh, terminology here, or this notation, right? This is the mean of all possible x bars, the mean of x bars, the standard deviation of x bars. Um, that is also called, we'll, we'll get to that later, but that's also called what's um, the standard error, okay? But it's the standard deviation of all the x bars. We call that standard error. Another word for that. Um, and so let me show you a picture of what a, uh, a sampling distribution looks like, okay, using life expectancy data from the world. Um, and so what you're going to think about, I want you to think about the difference between the distribution of a sample, right? That's just one distribution of a sample and the sampling distribution of a statistic. That's what we're looking at. There are two uh, things to examine here. So let's take a look real quick at that. Here is the distribution of the life expectancy of 198 countries that reported that. And so you can see the mean life expectancy is 71 years. And of course, there's going to be variance in that you can see, depending upon uh, which country you live in, you can be all the way to 84 years on average to 48.9, right? And so that leads to other statistical questions and ideas, things. But again, here's the mean right in the middle, 71.7. And so let's say I sample 20 of these 198 countries. Here's one sample. Okay, I'm going to draw it. I mean, get it. And so notice here, here's the mean. Here is the distribution for my 20 countries. The mean, the sample mean is 73.5. That's a distribution of a sample, of one sample. Now, let's say I did another sample. There's the distribution. This time the X bar is 71. Now notice on the bottom what we're starting to see is a sampling distribution. I am graphing all the possible X bars as I take one sample and then I'm collecting right the mean for those samples and then look at the distribution. Let's do that a hundred times. And let's draw that. And so notice what happens here. Here's the population distribution. Here's the distribution for one sample. And here is the sampling distribution of the statistic or the X bar. Notice that we'll see how it estimates. You'll see the blue part are our samples. And they're kind of, they're really close to the mean, right? It's the mean is right in the middle. And so it looks like then that we have a very good estimator here, which we were talking about. Um, again, some notation that you want to make sure you're aware of, right? Here, all this notation, uh, the mean of our sampling distribution, which I showed you, is equal to the mean, the mean of the population. Now, the standard deviation of your sampling distribution was smaller. They were a lot closer together. If we look at that one more time, you'll see it's really close together compared to the population standard deviation, 8.6 we'll see that the data for the sampling distribution is closer together, right? And hence we have a, an adjusted standard deviation or standard error. You divide it by the square root of n. Um, later on, we'll look at proportions, sampling distributions for proportions. And what we know is the distribution, the sampling distribution for proportion, u mu of p hat equals p. And then there is also, a, here's the standard deviation for all um, values. Um, for the distribution here okay and so that's what we're looking at look at that notation there um, and this leads us to the central limit theorem right um, the shape of all sampling distributions that's what we're really considering with the central limit theorem here is the distribution of all sample means will be approximately normal when we look at this distribution if the population is normal 
or our sample size is at least 30. And so that's uh, important to know, right, that you need to be large enough or nearly normal condition for our sampling distribution to be normal. And we care about the distribution being normal because then we can do all our statistical analysis with empirical rules and normal distributions. That's why we want the data normal.